Hi everybody, can you guess what golf swing mistake Pierce is making right now? <laughs> yes, we're talking about our top five golf swing mistakes. Do not go anywhere. Thank you for joining us. We are here at Purton Park Golf Club here in the UK. This is where we coach. And today we're bringing to you our top five golf swing mistakes. Now Pierce, we've been coaching together, let's say, for 40 years. Can you believe that? Pierce is a little older than me, but Guess what, we see a lot of mistakes and time and time again for the, for the golfers that we see, it's quite common to see the same thing. So what we thought we'd do today is bring to you the, the most common things, the top five that we see every single day, every single week out there on the lesson tee and we're gonna give you some solutions for it. So you watching this, I would say that you're going to be doing at least one, potentially two or more of these of these uh, mistakes. So uh, stay with us and we're gonna give you some fantastic solutions for this. Yeah, I think it's important as well to understand we've done these in an order as well. So if you do have one of these, you need to start with the first one that you hear. So we're going with the most important one now, the open club face. Before we get into the open club face, make sure you post your comments and questions down below about your game. These shows are all about you, so please post it down below and we'll get back to as many as we can and also do a video for you. Absolutely. Okay, so the open club face. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put it split screen against the club face that we would like to see. So as we go back with the open club face, we can see that I'm excessively rotating the club face as I swing back. I get to this waist high position we often use as a checkpoint. We can now see the leading edge is pointing out miles behind me, where with a square club face, it's pretty much on my spine angle. I then continue to the top of the backswing and again we can see I've got this cup in the wrist, I've got the leading edge pointing down towards the ground whereas with the square face we can see it's running parallel to the left forearm and then as we swing down that club face is still open, the wrist is still cupped as I'm swinging down to this waist high position again the leading edge is still pointing behind me whereas with the square one again it's a roundabout on that spine angle and this swing fault is the catalyst for some of the other swing faults that you're about to see. And it causes the slice, so we need to get rid of yeah, it. So many things happen from this, high, weak ball flights, contacts, directional issues. So this is something that sometimes very hard to see. So we do recommend that when, with all these drills, film your golf swing, video it. A lot of these phones now have slow-mo, so film these and take a look at exactly what we're looking at mm. here. Maybe use with the new Me and My Golf app coming soon. <clears throat> coming soon. So look, we're gonna really look at three, three areas, Pierce, aren't we? Three yeah. drills for three areas of the golf swing where the club face does get closed. And we're gonna start with the move away as we move the club away. And again, it's <clears> important, <throat> if your club face is open, you need to figure out the first time it's open, then attack that first. So this is the first drill if you roll the face straight away. So what we're looking for is, with the alignment stick, which I've just placed there without talking about, um, you can see it's just running as an extension of the shaft. Now I've got the alignment stick tucked on my belt, so it's on my left side. The objective is here, as I move the club away, I want to keep the alignment stick connected to my body until my hands go past my right leg. So as I'm doing this, look at the club face. It's definitely pointing more towards the ball. It's not pointing at the ball, but it's definitely more towards the ball as opposed to the open club face, which is out in front of me. And you can see that stick is now exactly. disconnected. So as soon as Pierce gets that sort of rotation of the hands, the excessive opening of the club face, what we see is that will come away from the side. So it's a great feeling this is to engage the torso, engage the hands and arms, get everything working together. We hear about this one piece move. Well, this gets everything working together. It does. And if you have got the open club face and it starts with that, that is what you need to do first, that drill you've just seen. So when we take it into the shot, it's obviously hard hitting a shot with the alignment stick there. So I'm just gonna get the feeling that that club face is still pointing more towards the ball as I take the club away. And of course it was a draw. <laughs> it had to be. Very nice. Okay, nice so shot there, Pierce, next actually. one. It was all right, wasn't it? It was, it was all right. okay. The next one is the top of the backswing. So we spoke about how the wrist could be cupped and it would cause the leading edge to drop down too vertically. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna work at getting that lead wrist flat. But it's so hard to feel, isn't it, Andy? We ask golfers to do this and we're like, yeah, that's hard for them to feel. And it is hard to feel. So we need some feedback. So I've teed a golf ball up and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to swing to the top of my backswing and I'm gonna hit this golf ball. So I'm gonna to swing to the top of my backswing and I'm gonna say, is that flat or not? And now I doesn't feel it, so I'm gonna flatten it off and then from there I'm gonna pull the trigger. Okay, so quite a bit out of the toe there, so it is hard to do. But I'm working really hard to flatten that off. If I feel it's cupped like that, I've gotta flatten it off. Okay, so slow swings, pause at the top, get that feeling, know it's in position and then fire it. It's gonna really help you educate those hands at the top of the golf swing. Okay. And then we've got for the downswing, Pierce. For the downswing, this sort of transition area as well, 
the bit between the backswing and the downswing where we're starting the downswing. As soon as we start the downswing and we see a cup in that wrist, in that face open, we're in a lot of trouble. Best players in the world do this. They, what we call, flex the wrist. That's what we need you to do. But we need you to get the lower body involved as well because we want to start the downswing as we know we should with the lower body. So we call it a flex and, sorry, we call it a pump and a flex. So the pumping action is me pumping the club down, starting with the lower body. And then the flexing action is literally doing that with the wrist, flexing the wrist. I had a breath here, Andy. I'm going to have a go hit a shot <laughs> just, here, though. Just relax, please. Just calm oh down. God, I'm so just excited. Let's get that worm out of the way. All right, here we go. So flex, sorry, pump and flex. Get it right, Piers. Pump and flex, here we go. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. Again, guess Get a what? little bit of a draw again, wrist. which you'd expect to see from the flattening uh, that wrist. So can that is, breathe out you can have a rest now, that's mistake number one. So we actually have 14 swing faults over at meandmygolf.com. You can head over there after you've watched this video and actually go through the shot fixer section where it'll actually pinpoint your swing faults and it gives you loads of fixes. So make sure you head over there after this video. Right, mistake number two, Pierce. It's a combination, isn't it? Talk us through these. It is actually, so it's two, so a bit cheeky here. So it's the sway and the reverse spine. We talk about all time. We don't see a lot of golfers with really good low body actions. The sway is the one of the, the one of the main faults that we see. So what we talk about when we're swaying, just move that golf ball there. So I've got some alignment sticks in here. You'll see what I'm doing with those at the moment. But a sway is when we move excessively laterally away from the target on the backswing. What we want to feel is though, if we have a line here from the right ankle to the hip that I'm staying on that line or even moving in from that line is okay. But that's what we're looking to do in our backswing. The reverse spine is when we get to the top of the backswing and the back leans excessively away from the target, sorry, toward the target and it hurts your lower back. So it's a number one, one of the number one causes of uh, lower back pain. The way we analyze this is we draw a line from the middle of the head down to the middle of the hips. And if it's leaning towards the target, that is the reverse spine. What we're after is an angle that looks like so. And you can see that if I, do sway, Andy, it kind of throws me into it does, that reverse yeah. It spine. does, it almost forces. So working it on does. the lower body really makes a difference to the upper body as well. So it's crucial that you cer you certainly check this as well. Yeah. Okay, so look, let's go through. I mean, you've got the alignment six here. This is ready. just really simple to go through at home. If you've got these, it's so visual as well. And you've got something to feel. It really is, it really is. So obviously we've got one stuck in the ground there, which is going to be resting against my trail leg. If you're on a driving range, just put it into a basket. You'll be able to prop it up. The other one through the belt loops and it's, very much on the target side. So I'm going to use this one first of all, because I'm going to get the sensation straight away in my move away that I'm going to, I'll get my hands up here, that I'm going to get my hips turning. I want my hips to turn. If they turn more, you'll find that there'll be less sway. Generally, when we see people sway, we don't get the turn and we can see where the stick is pointing. If I turn more, I'm not swaying and obviously I know that I'm going to load up my backswing as well. Now the next thing with this stick here, as I turn from here, I'm actually feeling that I'm moving away from the stick. Now that's a good thing because it's one of those things like the flat wrist at the top. People don't know that they're swaying, so they need to exaggerate it and actually make sure they actually come away from that stick there. So if you can do this move here, you're going to be in a better place. You're not going to be swaying. And then the way we couple that with fixing the reverse spine is when we have that move there, we're really feeling that our arms are pushing over this stick on the ground. So if there was a wall over there, I'm trying to push the wall down as I'm getting towards the top of my backswing. So that takes care of the, the sway and the reverse spine together. So it's yeah, a great way. Does. You look at Pierce there, top of the swing. He's got this great spine angle. The hips are working away. Great lower body motion from there. Really good. If you've got a mirror or a video camera on your phone, make sure you check this out. Make sure you video, make sure you video. Okay, and you can hit a golf shot with all this in place as well. So what I'm looking for on this one is that I want to see the turn. I want to see the alignment stick get towards the golf ball. And I want to, I want to feel, and when we look back on the video later, I want to feel a gap and create a gap between my leg and the stick. So let's just calm that down. Get myself set. Easy as that. We hope those have been helpful so far. If they are helpful to you, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for a video every single week to help your game. Right, let's get into mistake number three, the over the top. 
So the over the top, this is definitely related to the open club face. The open club face can cause the over the top and the reverse spine and the sway, again, can definitely affect this over the top and cause this over the top, should I say. So the over the top, in case you don't know, really important that when you analyze this on a video that you get the camera at the correct height. So what we're looking at is we want it at hand height running parallel to the target line. So the camera is pointing straight through the hands, running parallel to the uh, target at hand height. So once we have that, we can draw a line from the heel of the golf club underneath the trail elbow going up. And what we're looking for when we're swinging on plane is to get the golf club swinging down that line. If we're swinging over the top of it, we'll see a club which swings down literally over the top of that plane. Often swings to the left, causes a slice, there we go. So if we can change that, we're gonna give you one of our favorite drills here that really is great feedback, negative feedback if you get it wrong, something you can do on the range or on the practice area. So we've got a, an old shaft here and a bit of tubing. I'm gonna place it in the ground here at 30 degree angle from here, just so it's just behind the ball here. So you can see that there. So 30 degree angle, just just back of the golf ball there. Now the idea of this pitch, just talk us through, because obviously now yeah. you've got to work hard to miss this. You have, and the thing is as well with this, I mean, you've got to figure out a way of doing this on the range, but you can stick it underneath a range basket with maybe a towel underneath to prop it up. Definitely stick a foam pad, a noodle or something like that on top, because we could hit this, and you probably will to start with, because what will generally happen is if you swing over the top, you are going to hit this on the way down. So what you need to do is you need to start slow and rehearse What's it like to get that golf club and swing it underneath? We'll often get people to exaggerate this again and swing well underneath and feel as though they're swinging well out to the right. So again, it's all about this exaggeration. You're gonna to wanna to do this to start with. Let's get that club swinging under and take your time. Hit some mini shots to start with and then build it up the more comfortable you feel. Definitely. Have practice swings first without the golf ball, then do it slow when you hit the golf ball. You don't need to go fast here. If you go fast, you're probably gonna swing over the top still okay. if you are somebody who does this. So, so we're expecting no a draw on this one. And one thing, sorry, interrupting there, Andy. Stick it on a tee peg when you're on the grass because you're gonna have to keep moving the stick all over the place. Okay, so nice and smooth on this one. Piers are gonna go smooth to really emphasize the movement on the way down. And there's a beautiful high draw at the flag. Could be in. Could be in. Keep, watching. keep watching. Let's keep watching. Oh, big. Uh, a little bit big. Good shot, though. Right, Pierce, fourth mistake, hanging back. Talk us through it. This is something that we see so often. And again, we're going through this order. Start at one, work your way this way to number four now, the hanging back. So hanging back is when you start your downswing and you keep your weight and pressure on that back foot. You're hitting from behind the golf or hitting the ground before high ball flights. We can see the right foot spinning back. And the way we analyze this is we actually get a line from the outside of the uh, left ankle, the lead ankle. We draw it vertically upwards. And if you at impact are behind that line with your irons, then you're gonna be hanging back. With the driver, it's not as important because we're on a tee peg. But if we're short of that line there, we're gonna bottom out before the golf ball and we're gonna duff it, fat it, and hit it too high. Definitely, so just show us a good impact then, Pierce. So this is the difference oh, yeah. <laughs> now. We wanna see exactly where we wanna be. We wanna get all that pressure into that lead leg, all that weight through that lead heel. And you can see now Pierce is fully against that line. And look at the right foot now, a lot different action. It's gonna move in onto that instep of the foot. Okay, let's go through the drill. Two baskets, so you can do this on the driving range, anywhere you like. And all I'm gonna do is set this up for Pierce. I'm putting one basket literally up against his foot here. And then I'm gonna get the other one, oh, other way around, sorry, yes, Pierce. This one's here like this, upside down and that one's there the other way like this. This I is can't great move. feedback. I can't move. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it is exactly that, a feedback tool, no excuses. You know, you can use these at the driving range, obviously. So what we're looking for is, first of all, when I get to the top of the backswing, I want to feel as I'm, my focus is to move towards this one. This is the one I'm focusing on. This is the one that I want to move towards. I want to get the shin, the calf area to go into that basket. I'm going to turn onto that basket. You can see the basket's still there. It may fall over when you hit the shot. I've got to get that lead shoulder forward. But then as I'm swinging up and through now, you can see that right foot is coming away from the right foot basket. So again, this is just there to give you feedback after you've hit the shot. This is your focus. This is where we want you to move towards, we often say. Where you focus is where you move towards, literally in this instance here. So okay. again, one more time, move towards that basket and finish on that basket. Okay, so let's see what happens with these baskets. So the idea is just to get that weight into that lead side, get the pressure moving forward. And as you can see, Pierce has knocked the basket over there, didn't touch the one on the right foot. 
and that is how you fix the hanging back. That was the best ripper today. Almost there, Pierce. Last mm. one, last mistake. Early release. The early release. Now, this is a very common one. It is incredibly difficult to get rid of and to actually change, but let's show you what it is. So the early release is when we go to the top of the backswing, it's a downswing fault, and that when we start the downswing, these angles we created between the shaft and the forearm, we lose those angles early. So flipping, casting are all of the ways that we talk about this. And basically what happens as a result of this is when you're striking the golf ball, the shaft is either vertical or leant back, offering too much loft and again, bottoming out like the hanging back before the golf ball. So striking, you never feel like you really ever strike it. And you generally complain about losing distance when you're hitting your golf shots. What we're after, think of the hanging back and how the body moves yes we need the body to move that way but we want to hold on to those angles a little bit longer and then they get released a little bit later so when we strike the golf ball the shaft is length forward exactly that's where we get those pure strikes and from. penetrating ball flights that we get as well yes and yes. the key thing with this as well look early release if you have an open club face you are not going to actually fix the early release that you make you need to make sure that the face is in a good position first in the golf swing so you can actually create these angles better Indeed. so it's so important to do that. Indeed okay so look I think the thing with this as well we see often go wrong you know people trying to fix this people trying to change this and I think the reason being is a lot of golfers will focus on this area here we may call this the power lag part of the golf swing so they work at this power lag. they're really trying really hard to hold on to that lag and actually what happens is as a result they come down and they just jam their hands in and leave the club face wide open that's obviously going to cause you to hit it out to the right and even shank it. So if you've tried to get rid of your early release before and had the shanks, it's because you're probably getting a little bit wrong that way. So what we want to do is actually focus a little bit more on what we call the impact rise and getting the shaft lent forward. So we've got a cool little sort of drill here you can do where you can alternate this. So we've got two golf balls here. So this would be one set and you just keep repeating the sets as you go through. So the first thing we're going to do with this first golf ball is I'm gonna get my setup, but then I'm gonna go into what impact feels like. Again, I did this with a lesson just the other day and it works so well. So I'm pushing pressure into this lead leg. I'm getting my lead shoulder forward. I'm putting the shaft forward, but I'm also pressing the club into the ground. So I'm pressing the club into the ground. This is what I'm after when I've got this uh, good impact position, if we wanna call it, but this is where we wanna be at impact. Now from here, all I'm going to do is play a mini swing and then hold my finish. And we'll talk about that finish. So from here, mini swing. Okay, so we can see the low ball flight, but this is the most important part. Holding your finish at about sort of waist high. And we can see when I'm doing this, my right wrist is still bent and my left wrist is still flat. So I'm keep, I've kept those angles a little bit longer than I would do normally. And I'm holding on to that sort of forward shaft lean as I'm striking the golf ball. So yes, definitely. So what Pierce has done that, bending the right wrist here, he's kept that, he's kept the lead wrist flat and the club face is actually turning still. It's still looking back. This is the important thing, but these angles here is really working on that impact lag. It's so important to do this. And this is just great feedback to hold your finish. And I've got the tee peg here and then the golf ball was uh, struck around about here somewhere. The, sorry, the ground was struck around about there somewhere. So just quickly before you hit this last ball, yes. Pierce, show us what a poor through swing would of look course, like course, just for course. the guys at home. Yeah, so if you... As good feedback. Absolutely. So if you get this wrong and you're in this position here, we get you start here, you swing back and then you do this. That's not what we want to see. So I've reversed the wrists. The right wrist is flat or even bowed the other way. And then the left wrist is very cupped. The club head has gone very high. We often do a drill where we have two stakes with a rope on it, where we'd ask you to keep the club under the rope, like a limbo almost. But from here, we're just getting that right wrist. We've got to keep it bent. Okay, so the last drill here then, Pierce. So, that, so that's the first part of the set. So again, let's just recap on that. So we go impact, we swing back short, we hold short. The next shot is, we go into the setup, we create impact again, we push down into the, the ground with a shaft, but then we reset. So we reset ourselves into our setup, have a mini backswing, and again, hit the shot. Holding off the finish, beautiful low trajectory, very late on the strike, and again, I've maintained those angles. Exactly, and you will expect to see the golf ball go lower because you're leaning the shaft forward, you're creating these wrist angles that we need, and this is training the impact. The impact is the most important thing. We're not necessarily trying to really focus on holding these angles this way. We really want to get in this position where we can get the club face square and lean the shaft forward. Absolutely. So that is, look, that's the five swing, swing mistakes that we see so many people make. We have 14 of these over at meandmygolf.com. So I hope that's been useful. Make sure 
you go through the shop fixer section on our website because it will really help you pinpoint exactly the faults that you have and then give you loads of fixes for it as well. It'd be interesting to see how many faults you had in those one of the five. Let us know down below one to five. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next week.